So there's um, a page in your second, actually third chapter on Melody and Harmony on 6th edition, it's page 25, where they go over a bunch of terms. It says key, tonal center, modulation, scales, chords, octaves, major, minor, consonants, dissonance. Those are very complex things that are interrelated um, <clears throat> to try and explain to somebody without taking a music theory course and, and, and even then, you know, if you've got all the mechanics of how pieces go together on a technical level, those are fairly advanced. So it's funny that they they need you to know this, but they're not, um, you know, they're not doing it in a way that gives you a lot of background. So I'm going to try and go through these and, and see if I can help you quickly understand what these terms are. So we're going to jump right into the middle and talk about scales. It's the third one down and key or tonal center. A tonal center is where home feels like. Uh, it's where you finish your piece. It's where you begin your piece. Um, so for instance, if I go, and we're playing, you can feel that this feels like it wants to go home. Okay, so tonal center, that's right there. Okay, um, if, uh, and how's that, how's that made? Well, uh, part of it's just by what you start with and what you end in, but it's not whatever you want it to be. It has to do with the materials you're using. So the most basic material for our Western music is called a scale. A scale is a collection of notes. Uh, this is the one I was using. And you can feel that that last one is home. And at the top, they're the same note. That's that octave that we talked about in the other video about di uh, doubling vibration speeds or halving them. Um, the distance between the notes sonically and physically on the instrument create relationships so that, because uh, they're not all the same, so that the first one feels home and stable and familiar, and then the other ones, you know, form a hierarchy that eventually push us back to, or at least make us want to push back to that home place. If I change the scale, like currently I'm using, if I change the scale, Maybe you can see locationally I'm not a different place, but now that note feels like home because the notes have distance relationships and things they want to do. Now, out of that, I guess what you could think of is a collection of, of notes together form this scale and they have specific distances between the notes to form a relationship that push you to that home note or first note. In fact, when somebody says, what key are you in? They're actually asking you what scale you're using because note number one of the scale is home and that's the key you're in. So if I say I'm in the key of C, that means I'm using a C scale. If I'm a scale that starts and ends on C. If I'm in the key of D, that means I'm starting and ending on a scale that has a D as its beginning and terminus and, uh, and so on. Now, you can also think of a scale is sort of like a palette of paints. The composer takes them and builds their melodies out of them, like, um, let's see. Right, so that's note number one, and note number five in the scale, and note number six, and five, and four, four, three, three, two, two, back to one. Now if I change back to that other scale, this is my new one, 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 five, So if you think of those um, like um, a palette of paints that you can use to paint a picture, it's a bad analogy because one's sound and one's visual, but the scale, the notes you use, uh, drastically change the character and quality. Just like if you had a collection of paints uh, to paint something with, combining those colors together, depending on what you have, uh, change the mood and, uh, and the coloring of a piece of, of music. Now, um, the next thing that we want to talk about is chords. Chords. Um, in addition to tunes being made out of the scale that you're using, and the scale gives us, you know, notes for tunes or melodies, and they also give us that hierarchy that takes us back to your key, or what we call a tonal center, home, okay, uh, where a thing wants to come to rest. All your harmonies, chords are basically the structure of the harmonies 
uh, we put three or four notes together and uh, they're combined in certain ways it's not quite that simple but you grab them from your scale and then they make harmonies that support your melody so for instance that um, um, well that or so I can build the harmonies out of that same scale and every time I change my hand in configuration I'm I'm altering the notes from that scale the notes the notes of the scale are the same but I'm choosing certain notes from that scale to combine together to make the harmonies and that also supports the idea of tonality and the key that you're in and the, and the tune so for instance a, B, C, D, E, F, G. And this is something when we do another class, we go backwards. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Just like that, right? Now, I'm singing the melody instead of playing it here, but I'm still using notes from that scale, and I'm using combinations of those notes from the scale to build the chords or the harmonies that support that, okay? Um, at the bottom, it talks about major and minor. And what that means is that uh, there are different kinds of scales, not just that start on different notes, but different qualities. The spacing between the notes changes the quality of the scale, just like uh, spices that you put into a food or, or condiments and sauces and things changes the way it sounds. So here's my C scale. And the distance between those notes, without getting complicated, is, is basically the configuration that we call major. If I change the distance between those notes it still starts and end on C, but the, the notes are slightly altered. Right? I hope you can hear the difference. Here's the major one. Part of it. And here's the minor one. Okay? And it drastically changes the mood. So just by changing the scale, then the notes that we get in there would change the chord. So instead of this, I would change the notes. And that's still a C chord, but now it's using the minor notes or minor scale notes. And um, let's see, how about this? And it sounds very different. If you want an example of that and you're listening, the very beginning of... Um, Ferndel by uh, Bizet it starts off in the minor and it sounds very, very, you know, powerful and abrupt. But then at the very end in the finale, when everything's combined together and it's just in the last sort of hurrah before the end, it kicks into major and it's sort of this positive, triumphant outcome at the end. Um, we use them depending on what we want. So, for instance, the ABC song, right? A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P. Okay, so. Um, my degrees are in composition and I wrote a backwards alphabet song. So instead of being in the major, I wanted it to be in the minor because the the alphabet song's in major and since I'm going backwards, I thought let's put it in minor. So uh, for instance, when I'm singing this, that's home. That's note number one of the scale. Okay, I'm using a D scale, but if I change it to the minor D scale, Now I wrote my backwards alphabet song that changes the character. C Y X N W V U T S R Q P O N M L K J I H G F E D C B A. And you know, one is major, one's minor. They they have very different characteristics, so you can choose what you want to do there. And it's internal workings of the scale. The notes change. The di the distances between the notes change. And the outgrowth of that is your tunes have different characters and the chords that you do use to support them also grow out of that differently and sound differently. All right, now I'm gonna try and keep this not too long. I guess the last question is modulation. Modulation is a tricky thing to explain because you, you need to know what tonality is. Again, tonality or key is when you use a scale, each of the notes has a hierarchy and the first note in that scale is home. It's the most important thing. Um, so, um, let's see, when you modulate, it's a piece of music that changes that scale, ergo the tonal center, in the middle of the piece. 
Um, it happens all the time in uh, classical and romantic music and Baroque music. Once this uh, system developed, it's a way of keeping interest uh, for the listener and to build more uh, complex structures. But we use it in pop songs and, and things all the time because um, we need to build variation in, in, the, in the music. So it's the process of changing from one scale, so home would be in a certain location, to another scale. And we're not going to get into the mechanics of that, but the easiest way to do it is to just change. So here's a, a song called um, Blackberry Blossom, and I'm going to start using the C scale. Hmm. I'm going to remember it. Hold on. That last note is home. That C, same note as there, same note as that, but that's down the octave, okay? So you might play that song. And then if you wanna create interest or a little variation, I'm gonna take the same melody, change it to a new scale degree. Had to think about how that would work in the new key. And then eventually you'll come back. And so on. Um, so right in the middle of the song, because if we're gonna repeat the melody again, um, and this is a folk song, so it's pretty simple to keep the, the arrangement fresh, you know, we start in one place and then we just jump to another place. Now there are more sophisticated ways of doing that. And in this Western European art music, classical music and romantic music and Baroque music, there's lots of subtle techniques that they'll sneak it in and your, your ears won't, your ears will perceive it, you'll understand it subconsciously, but uh, you won't necessarily be able to go like, ah, that's modulation to this new key or scale, unless you're highly trained. Or you have something called perfect pitch, which allows you to just pick out something like that. All right, well, that's about 12 minutes or so. I think we're going to stop there. But in summary, you pick a scale and that collection of notes builds your tunes and your harmonies or chords. And they all form a hierarchy together. The first note of the scale, same thing for the last note, is home. It's where the music starts and eventually the tunes and the harmonies want to come back to. You can thwart that expectation, but it does feel like trying to almost sneeze and then not or something like that. Um, and that coming home, that location, is your key or tonal center. It's where everything wants to go to. When somebody says, what key are you in? They're really just asking you, what scale are you using? Where's your tonal center? Because there's a whole hierarchy of, of well, then if you're in this key, you're going to use these chords and these notes and those kind of things. Okay, um, Major and minor are just two different modes of the same scale. Major scale, change the position of these notes. The first note and the last note stay the same. Right? And then because of that, everything grows out of that differently. Different chords, different notes, a different feeling of how the music goes. Hmm. Modulation is when in the middle of a piece you change from one scale or tonal center to another. And the more sophisticated and longer a piece of music gets, the more often it'll do it. Although it's not random, there are rules and, and uh, customs and guidelines. People ask you what's the difference between classical music, for lack of a better word, and maybe pop music and things like that. Well, pop songs are shorter. And don't get me wrong, I love pop songs. I've written a bunch. Um, but uh, they have to reach in and grab you and get your attention in the first, like, five seconds. And they've got to hold your attention for two or three minutes, and then they're done. Uh, otherwise, if you don't like it at the beginning, you change it to another song, right? Um, and, and they don't want to hang on too long. So the changing of key, right, even the chords that get used and the time to work stuff out musically is shorter. Plus, it's, it's a commodity that's trying to grab your attention like like fast food you know it's like it's delicious and it's good maybe it's not great from a long-term impact but it's gotta it's gotta take your money right away 
Um, classical music and art music had a longer time to work things out in their pieces. It's an artistic produce, uh, a production. They're trying to synthesize these materials together and, and work out all the possibilities that might happen. All right. Uh, as we approach 15 minutes, I think we'll stop right there. Consonance and dissonance, the last thing on the page is simply that certain combinations of the sound sound stable and certain ones sound unstable. The, the stable ones are called consonant and the unstable ones are called dissonant. Okay, for instance, that chord is very stable and this one here, it wants to move back because these two notes in there are very unstable together and they want to go like that to a more stable place. Some people say consonance is pretty and dissonance is ugly, but that's not the case any more than some um, some things are spicy and some things are, are not, right? It's a personal taste though. All right.